In lesson 6.3, you will perform function operations and composition. We will be able to create a new function by performing operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division on two functions. Also, composition of functions can be used to create a new function. In this first uh, example, we're going to let f of x equal 3x to the 1 3rd power and g of x equal 2x to the 1 3rd power. We want to find h of x and then state the domain of h of x. So to create this function h of x, all we have to do is substitute in f and g and add to simplify. So I'll put 3x to the 1 3rd power in for f. I'll put 2x to the 1 3rd power in for g. And because they're like terms, I can add to simplify. 3x to the 1 3rd power plus 2x to the 1 3rd power is just 5x to the 1 3rd power. And now that fractional power can be written as a, a root. So I could write this as 5 times the cube root of x. Now when we talk about the domain, the domain or the x values that we can use in this function would be all reals. Because we can take the cube root of negatives, we can take the cube root of zero, and we can take the odd root of positives. So domain is all reals. Okay, in problem two, we're subtracting f and g. So we'll run through those same steps of substitution. And then we will simplify by adding or subtracting like terms. 3x to the 1 3rd power plus a negative 2x to the 1 3rd power is going to be positive 1x to the 1 3rd power, which I can write again as a, a root, the cube root of x. And I'm taking an odd root again, so the domain is going to be all reals. Okay. Now we're going to let f of x equal 4x to the 1 3rd power and g of x equal x to the 1 half power. We want to find h of x and again state the domain of h of x. So here we're multiplying two functions to create a new function. So I'll substitute in for f 4x to the 1 3rd power and in for g x to the 1 half power. Now I just have a product here to to simplify, and we know that when we multiply like bases, we add exponents. So this is going to be x to the 1 3rd plus 1 half power. I'm going to need a common denominator, so I'm going to write 1 3rd as 2 6, and I'm going to write 1 half as 3 6. So when I add those fractions, I've got x to the 5 6 power. And now that fractional exponent again is just a root, so I would want to get rid of that fractional exponent and write this as the sixth root of x to the fifth power. Okay, now because I have an odd number of uh, x's underneath that radical, if x were negative, I'd have a negative product, and I can't take an even root of a negative product. So our domain here is going to be restricted the x values that we can use will have to be greater than or equal to zero. So the domain is all x greater than or equal to zero. And in problem two, our new function uh, we will create by dividing f and g. So h of x 
is going to equal uh, 4x to the 1 3rd power over x to the 1 half power. And when I simplify, when I'm dividing like bases, I want to subtract exponents. So it's going to be 1 3rd take away 1 half, or again, um, 2 6 take away 3 6. So I'm going to have 4x to the negative 1 6 power. And I can't leave a negative exponent in my answer, so I know that I'm going to move that base to the denominator of the fraction and make the exponent positive. And now getting rid of that fractional exponent, I can write this as 4 over <coughs> the sixth root of x. And now I know uh, that in the denominator I have an even root and I can't take an even root of a negative. Also because I'm taking the even root of x in the denominator, x cannot be zero. So the domain here for h is all x greater than zero. x must be positive and it cannot be zero because that sixth root, again, is in the denominator of a fraction. Okay, now we're going to let f of x equal 2x to the negative 1 power and g of x equal x squared minus 1. We want to find h of x and state its domain. So this is function composition. In this first problem, we're going to put g inside of f to create h. So h of x is going to equal, I'm going to start with f because it's on the outside, and f is 2 times x raised to the negative 1 power. But in for x, I'm going to put g, and g is x squared minus 1. So simplifying, I want to get rid of that negative exponent, so I'm going to have 2 over x squared minus 1 raised to the positive 1 power, so I just have 2 over x squared minus 1. Okay, now domain for h, look at that denominator. What We can't divide by 0, so what would make that denominator 0? Positive 1 and negative 1. To find out, we can set that denominator equal to 0 and solve for x. So I'd have x squared is equal to 1. And if I take the square root of both sides, I find out that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1, which is just 1. So the domain is all x not equal to plus or minus 1, because that would make the denominator 0. Okay, in problem 2, we're going to put f inside of g to create h of x. So this time I'm going to start with g which is x squared minus 1, but in for x, I'm going to put f, and f is 2x to the negative 1 power. Okay, so to simplify, I've got a product raised to a power. I'm going to raise every factor inside that product to that power outside. So I'm going to have x to the negative 1 power squared, which is double powers, and I want to simplify. Oops, I also have minus 1 here. So simplifying, I've got 2 squared, which is 4. I've got x to the negative 1 times 2, negative 2 power, minus 1. And then I need to get rid of that negative exponent, so I'll drop that base to the denominator of a fraction and make the exponent positive. So there's h in simplest form. Its domain is all x not equal to 0. Zero would be the only value that would make this denominator 0. OK, 
Okay, in problem 3, we're going to put f inside of itself to create h of x. So we're going to start with f, which is 2x to the negative 1 power. And in for uh, x, I'm going to put f. So I'm going to put 2x to the negative 1 power inside and simplify. So I've got that factor of 2 out front. I can get rid of that negative exponent by dropping that product 2x to the negative 1 power to the denominator and making the exponent positive. Okay, and now I've got 2 over 1 times, I'm going to move that x to the top now and make the exponent positive 1 and I've got 2 in the denominator. So I'll be able to cancel my factors of 2 and the whole thing simplifies to just x. But now when I consider the domain of this new function h, which is just x, I have to go back to the beginning where I had x to the negative 1 power, which is really 1 over x. So x is in the denominator, which means x cannot be 0. We can't raise 0 to the negative 1 power. So again, the domain is all x not equal to 0. And the last question, what is the value of g of f of negative 4? Well, we already found g of f of x. We'll go back up above to locate g of f of x. And that h, g of f of x, simplified to 4 over x squared minus 1. Okay, now we want to evaluate that function at negative 4. We want to put negative 4 in for x and get a, a function value. So that would be negative 4 squared in the denominator. So I'd have 4 over negative 4 squared is positive 16. And 4 sixteenths is going to simplify to 1 fourth. So I have 1 fourth minus 1, which can be written as 4 fourths. I have a common denominator. And 1 fourth take away 4 fourths is negative 3 fourths. So the value of g of f of negative 4 is just negative 3 fourths. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 through 6, 8, and 12 found on pages 429 and 431 of your textbook.